we've just heard. The First Minister met the latest new Scottish Secretary for the first official time this evening ahead of tomorrow's Joint Ministerial Committee. The meeting comes among a broad debate in Scotland about the most appropriate level of new powers for our devolved Scottish Parliament. It was this time last year when Calman first published his recommendations. A lot has moved on since then, both politically and economically. Most politicians seem to agree some sort of increased fiscal power would help the situation. But opinions vary about the detail and whether the original Calman proposals are still fit for purpose. Economists Margaret and Jim Cuthbert told the Scottish Government's consultation that the Commission as it stands is dangerously flawed and the implementation of Calman on income tax would be extremely dangerous with a real risk of a worsening cycle of increasing Scottish income tax rates and relative economic decline. However, the man who chaired Calman's fiscal expert group, Professor Anton Muscatelli, argues there are no inherent flaws in the Commission's recommendations. If Calman's proposals are implemented, UK governments will have to consider the effect on the Scottish budget every time they plan to change the structure of income taxation in the UK budget. He goes on to suggest a new office for budget responsibility might be the best vehicle to referee these decisions. And as for the question, does Calman go far enough? That, he says, is a political, not economic judgment. Greater fiscal autonomy brings greater accountability, but it also means that the Scottish budget would be more volatile. We have managed to do something. But an increasing number of political, academic and business voices are now calling for Calman to be taken to the max. The entrepreneur Tom Hunter is one of those calling for radical change. I am for giving Scotland control of its own destiny from that point of view. And if we have the levers to increase business activity, we need to have the power to keep the receipts from that. With the new coalition government still anxious to show respect to its devolved partners, the extent of agreement or disagreement at tomorrow's talks may help to define the next step in the powers the Scottish Parliament acquires. I'm joined now by two contributors who have differed publicly recently about just what's the best medicine for Scotland. Ian McLean's Professor of Politics at Oxford University and was a member of the Calman Commission. Jerry Hassan is a political commentator and blogger who's been supporting the argument that Calman doesn't go far enough. How so? Well, I think the, the Calman powers, as, as a number of people have said, as a number of people said, quoted, they, they, they're, they're very problematic, they're very technocratic, there's ways in which they leave a whole host of powers at London, but basically in a way on tax rates, tax bans, and really in a way, as, num as Alex Salmon said and others, we've been, we've been overtaken by events. The Calman powers aren't aren't simple, they're based on basically one tax plus a whole host of other small taxes. Well, perhaps, perhaps we should just take a moment yeah. to explain that the key measure mm. in mm. Calman is for the UK government to mm. reduce income tax in Scotland by 10 pence in the mm. pound and leave it up to the politicians at Holyrood to decide by yeah. how much to top that up. What's wrong with giving MSPs that kind of control? Well, for a start, it's based on one tax, and there's a whole host of ways in which the tax bans, the tax revenues, they are retained. As, as, as Anton Muscatelli said, there's a whole host of ways in which Westminster still controls a large part of the financial parameters of Scotland. Fiscal autonomy gives us much, much more say. Doesn't this scheme, uh, Professor McLean, create perhaps more problems than it solves? Well, I'm mystified by some of the things that we've just heard um, people say. Um, Alex Salmon, for instance, says that Anton Muscatelli and I are the only people defending Kalman. Jim and Margaret Cuthbert, you reported, saying there are all sorts of dangers with Kalman. Well, maybe there are, there are, but the other side of the coin is that there are the more taxes that you assign or devolve to the Scottish Parliament, the bigger the dangers. OK, let's, go, let's say we go beyond Kalman, we devolve not, not just income tax, but also, say, national insurance, VAT, um, capital taxes, uh, and taxation on North Sea oil. But each of these carries a risk. And put together, 
the risks of going further than Carmen are necessarily greater than the risks of going with Carmen. But isn't it only a risk if you don't trust the politicians that would be in charge of these levers to use them wisely? Not at all. Uh, it's, it wouldn't be the politicians' fault if, for instance, let's take the case of North Sea Oil, very uh, emotive question in Scotland. Suppose the world price of oil goes down, it would be not the fault of the, of the MSPs, but it would mean that if they controlled the yield and they had to pay for Scottish schools and hospitals out of it, they'd suddenly be able to pay for fewer schools and hospitals. Is At that, the moment, that well, risk is shared around the UK. Well, let me bring in Jerry Hassan on, on that. I mean, is that a resource that's so volatile you wouldn't propose devolving the, the taxation associated with it? Well, I, I'm not sure about that, but Ian's right in the sense that, obviously, uh, the more tax powers are devolved, we, we, we carry risk. But as also Ian and most of the consensus admits, apart from the Treasury, certainly pre-election, we know that the existing status quo isn't an option. Calman has opened up something that basically we now need to explore. Barnett's not going to be maintained, and you know, exploring where we're going to go is going to carry all sorts of risk and all sorts of risks that will have to be, they're going to have to be mediated in transitional measures as well because Scotland's going to have cuts, significant public spending cuts as in the last news item and we're going to be moving towards taking more fiscal responsibility. Professor McLean, uh, given the, the risks you talk about, why then are business figures, leading business figures, who are notoriously uh, risk averse in certain circumstances, why are they saying let's just go for it? You'll have to ask them to speak for themselves. Um, there's two possibilities. One is that they just possibly haven't studied these risks in as much detail as we on the Carmen Expert Group did spend some months looking at this. Another possibility which you mustn't dismiss is that um, for some business people it might be that they think that the level of public spending in Scotland is too high. Greater fiscal autonomy would almost certainly mean less public spending in Scotland. Oh, well, let's I think that, not let's a lot of people are point, aware of that. Let's put that point straight to Jerry Hassan. More responsibility, less cash. I think Ian's actually right here, really. And this is one of the, the... There's many, many different kind of visions of fiscal autonomy. And one of the unsaid, unexported, is some of the business people here are out about. They're wanting to cut corporation tax. They're wanting to cut business taxes. And they want to make Scotland, if I'm caricaturing a little bit, a kind of Hong Kong of North. Where Ian and I would agree is how do you develop a tax system that basically aids Scottish public spending and a kind of progressive Scottish society. We both agree Barnet isn't the solution. But really, in a way, there's a whole host of us don't... Really we think the common power, powers are very thought through. But he's saying a, a wider package of, of tax powers would increase the mm. risk and would probably reduce the cash available to spend. Well, he's right. He's right in terms of North Sea oil, but widen, I don't see how widening the basis of taxes increases your risk. I think it lessens the risk by the fact that it's a wider host of powers and also putting most of your powers in one 10p tax thing that, as we see, is all still related to the Scottish bloc, still related to power lying at Westminster. Do That's you, a risk. Do you uh, regard this debate, uh, Professor, as being about politics or being about economics? In which discipline will we find the right solution for Scotland? Well, I'm in politics, and it's inherently about both. I think, um, uh, in a way, perhaps uh, you're sorry that Jerry and I are agreeing about so much. We're not. Uh, we're surprised. not. Uh, we're not at each other's throats on this, um, but. I think the politics and the economics are both a lot further forward than in the days before Kalman when people were just whinging about not getting enough to spend. At uh, least Kalman and all the other alternatives are about raising tax as well as spending and a responsible parliament, a responsible Scottish parliament, is one which uh, 